Hello. The purpose of this video is to provide a brief explanation of the WISE PC Extender product and then demonstrate the technology. WISE PC Extender is basically a software product that allows you to convert existing legacy PCs into thin clients, thus allowing you to achieve many of the benefits of desktop virtualization that you would achieve with true thin clients without the need to replace existing hardware. WISE PC Extender works with Microsoft, Citrix, Dell, and VMware VDI solutions. WISE PC Extender allows you to leverage many of the management and update technologies used by other WISE Thin clients, namely the ability to update and configure using HTTP, HTTPS, or FTP. It also integrates and allows management through the WISE Device Manager product. WISE PC Extender is based on Dell WISE Enhanced SUSE Linux and offers you the ability to have read-only file system and lock completely locked down system. It's important to understand that although Dell WISE offers thin client firmware options from ThinOS and Windows Embedded, that the Dell WISE PC Extender is based exclusively on Dell WISE Enhanced SUSE Linux. Let's go ahead and demonstrate how that technology would work. For my demonstration, I'm going to take a Windows 7 PC this is a very generic system that I've installed Windows 7 on and Service Pack 1, so not really done any customization to the system at this point. I have the download of the WISE PC Extender product ready to install, and I'm going to go ahead and launch that and begin the installation wizard. As I go through here, there's not a lot of options, but basically I'll install the software uh, on the same partition and then modify the bootloader so that as this Windows PC boots, I have the option to boot back either into Windows 7 or the newly installed uh, SUSE Linux PC Extender thin client part or, uh, installation. So as I go through the install, that's done here. Before I reboot, I'm going to go ahead and look at that bootloader. You'll be able to see here the default was to allow it to boot either into Windows 7 or PC Extender after 30 seconds. Uh, I'm going to leave PC Extender as a default, but I'm going to reduce that down to three seconds uh, to make my demonstrations just actually run smoother. So let's go ahead and restart the thin client. And the next thing you'll be able to see is I'm actually at the bootloader screen here, and it begins to count down from three seconds and then launches my PC Extender. Again, the way that we're deploying it is ideal for demonstrating or testing the product uh, in case you want to be able to go back and use your Windows desktop. Um, you can also install this as a bare metal install. That means that you could replace any Windows operating system on the hardware with the SUSE Linux distribution that's included with PC Extender. You could also remove the hard drive completely and boot from another source like a USB thumb drive. All right, during the first boot, there was a few things going on, um, verbose messages. Uh, but now I'm ready to log in, so it's, it's really that quick. I'm going to log in as the default administrator. Um, there's three users there by default, administrator, thin user, and guest. As you would imagine, the administrator has full access into the SUSE Linux system. Uh, look, let's look at a few local things that I have available. I have the ability to add a connection. I'm going to add a Firefox browser connection for my first demonstration. So just really leveraging the fact that unlike some uh, Dellwise Zero clients that don't have a local browser, this PC Extender does have the local Firefox browser, uh, thus allows me to make this type of connection. So now I've got a simple connection. I can look at the other types of connections I can create, whether they're Citrix, uh, VMware, RDP connections. All those types of connections can be added through this connection manager window. If I click on the newly created browser, you can see it actually launches and takes me right into the uh, to the Dell web page. And again, very simple manual steps that I've done in here. Now let's look at some of the um, other features that I have available on my PC Extender Thin Client. First thing we'll look at, because I'm going to connect later to Citrix, you can see I can manually set up my Citrix settings here, uh, but I'm going to essentially do that, so I'm going to leave those blank. I want to look at my I and I settings. That's where I would use an FTP, HTTP, or HTTPS to configure the device. Uh, that's blank right now. And same thing with my WISE Device Manager, which I can use for asset tracking and remote reboots and uh, remote shadows, etc. on the thin client. 
So let's go ahead and reboot this thin client. As I'm rebooting this thin client, I'm going to go ahead and pause it and I'm going to enable my FTP server. So go ahead and doing a shutdown here. Again, this is the first shutdown, so there's a few um, extra um, verbose messages and the first installation of PC Extended that you wouldn't see in successive reboots. So as the device begins to reboot, it'll come back up into the boot manager. I'll go ahead and pause that. Now here you can see a custom DHCP option tag. And this information is the IP address of my FTP server that I'm using in this case. You can see it's going to put it over there. Here's an INI file and a desktop background. So a very simple configuration um, that'll tell the device to actually auto log in as the admin um, and do that in three seconds and set the desktop background. So if you remember last time after a fresh install of PC Extender, I had to go ahead and log in as an admin. It was waiting for credentials. Um, you'll notice now the device will boot up. The DHCP option tag will tell it where to get its configuration file and it does need to connect to the network port to get that configuration file. Right now it still has the previous uh, config which is playing the factory default so it's waiting for me to log in. Once it gets the INI file um, the device realizes oh I do need to automatically log in which it begins to do there and it also realizes that it needs to set the custom background that I made available to it. So now you can see the device. I've set it to automatically log in as admin. I've still got the local browser connection that I created last time. Uh, but if I look inside of my INI settings on the client, you can see that this was populated with the information that was specified in the DHCP option tag. You can also see if we go into more, applica or more applications, you can see in our diagnostics. Um, I'll show you where you can actually see the copy of the INI file. So this just allows us for troubleshooting purposes. I can see, okay, that's the INI file um, that was sent and that's indeed what's being read by the thin client. Again, basically setting the background and automatically logging in as in the admin. So let's go ahead and show a little bit more complicated INI file. In this case, we are gonna enable VNC and more importantly, we're gonna set the uh, login information to be a Citrix storefront site. Um, I do have the Zen App Services support enabled on there um, all the way down to my config XML file um, which is required for the PC extender to get the storefront uh, functionality. So now this device will boot up and just the same as last time on the first boot um, the immediate response before it has the opportunity to connect to the network um, it'll wait for the INI. It did, it did that, it brought in and now I'm logging in as my user um, into my demo domain. You can notice I'm no longer doing a local login. I'm logging into my domain. It's communicating with my uh, the ZenApp services site portion of the storefront and now you can see in connection manager where before I was actually manually creating connections. These have, um, I have my dynamically created um, HDX based connections. So I have hit the desktop and you can see now that I'm logging into a Citrix ZenApp based Windows 2008 R2 desktop on this device. You can see I also had applications that were available to me that were created in the connection manager. And again, they were dynamically created. So reviewing what the device did, the device booted up, the DHCP option tag told it where to get the INI configuration file, the configuration file then told it where the storefront site was. I log in and I'm ready to go. Now let's look a little bit more at the integration with WDM. Here's my WISE device manager server. You can see here, this is my PC extender client, I can see information, I can see the hardware that's generic PC, I can look at the different tabs and get some more information on it. If I go ahead and right click on the device, you can see there's numerous functions that I can do to my PC extender client. Um, since I did enable uh, VNC, I'll go ahead and click on remote shadow and I should get the ability to enter my password that I've specified. And you can see now I'm actually shadowing my PC extender client. Uh, I can go ahead and kick connect again, so now this time you can see I'm, I'm operating actually from my WDM console. I'm VNC'd over to my PC extender client and now I'm making a um, ICA connection to a Windows Zen app desktop. And you can see there the performance is pretty good. I'll go ahead and log out of here. That'll bring me back to my PC extender desktop. Now we actually did that. Let's show uh, a third example and a last example. We're going to set the device to automatically log in as a more locked down user. So no longer logging in as an admin because I don't want the user to be able to make changes. I'm going to log in as an extremely locked down guest user and then I'm going to auto launch Firefox but I'm going to do it in a kiosk mode so the only thing that the user will see is their um, Zen app services or their 
their web-based Citrix site. So again, as the previous in, um, load looked there, it wanted me to log in and, and authenticate against my domain. It's going to get the INI file. It says, oh, I need to auto log in as guest. <laughs> and it'll begin that functionality. So now it's automatically logged in as guest. And it also, it'll actually automatically launch Firefox, but it, it'll launch it in the kiosk mode, which means the user is not going to know that they're using a local browser and they'll have no access to it. So really, as the devices boot up, this is the first thing a user sees. They're going to put their domain, uh, username, and password in their login and they're going to get access to their published applications and desktops. In this case, since I only have the single desktop, um, there's actually a nice feature where it automatically launches me into that desktop. So I booted the device up. I'm into my uh, Windows 2008 desktop. I can go ahead and um, look around and use this desktop from my PC Extender client. I can also see that here's my applications. If I close out of the desktop, I can set and specify those desktops and have them. So I'm getting the um, PC receiver or the Citrix receiver functionality on here. If I do close out of my Firefox session, you can see I have it automatically set to reconnect. Um, I can make the connection quicker. I'll go ahead and click OK. It'll take me right back in. So really the, the, the user had no um, local ability on the PC extender client based on Linux. It's again, they're only getting uh, Firefox in a kiosk mode and that really only gives them the ability to log in. So. Um, I hope you found that um, demonstration useful. For more information, here is a link on PC Extender. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video.